you've given us this uh, this prediction then of record profits in 2021. I wonder how much uh, of that is to do with the pandemic. You're seeing high demand, of course, for supplies, for vaccines, for therapies, for tests and the like. Is that something that you're co uh, counting on continuing through 2021? Mac has three different businesses. We have our biopharma business, our life science business, and our electronics business. The biopharma business was in 2020 slightly negatively affected through the lock, the consequences of the lockdown, but has recovered very well and is performing uh, excellently. Our life science business that uh, caters to the needs of researchers and biotech companies and vaccines, uh, vaccines companies, is benefiting from uh, additional demand in the diagnostics the therapeutics and the vaccines space. We have good visibility as to our order books and we expect this trend to continue for quite a while. Uh, our semiconductor or electronics business is, is performing very well too. We're all living in this digital world nowadays and people need more and more laptops and uh, servers and uh, Semiconductor manufacturing is uh, is very hot these uh, these days. So we think that these trends are more long term. Yes, I'll return to semiconductors in just a moment. But just to stick with the pandemic, Stefan, and your uh, expert assessments of of where we are there, are you more or less optimistic than you were back in January about the trajectory of the pandemic? How do you see 2021 panning out? Well, the fact that we have several vaccines registered uh, uh, less after less than a year that the pandemic hit us is actually absolutely encouraging. We have high quality vaccines uh, uh, in the market. Uh, we do assume, however, that the virus might be endemic in future and that this will develop into an influenza type of situation where with new variants uh, uh, emanating, we will have to get re-vaccinated uh, uh, routinely. That is not a given, but that could be uh, that could be possible. Uh, that's interesting. And I wonder on the vaccination, Stefan, whether you think Europe needs any kind of rethink. The rate of vaccination lags on in, in continental Europe versus the UK and versus the United States. You talk a lot to other pharmaceutical chiefs, to, to governments. And I wonder if you need if you think a big, a big change is needed to, to increase the pace. Well, I think that uh, it was fairly evident uh, that uh, when we saw the phase two data of some of the major vaccine players, especially BioNTech, and Moderna, uh, in the middle last year, that there would be a high probability for these vaccines to really, uh, to really work. Different governments have shown different approaches, uh, different approaches to this. However, uh, whatever governments could have done, there were there are plenty of technical and scientific challenges. So scaling up vaccine production is not a simple is not a simple task. So all in all, vaccine supplies are uh, improving uh, improving greatly, and I'm very confident that uh, we will have enough vaccine available to vaccinate everybody who wants to be uh, vaccinated by middle or slightly later uh, this year. It is true that different countries perform differently. It's, uh, it's fantastic to see how well Israel has handled this situation. Also, how dig digitalized the Israeli healthcare system is and how important it is to have real world evidence real-world evidence data. What I hear from politicians across the world and mostly from Europe is that people have been sensitized to the need to make our healthcare systems more effective and more resilient. That's an interesting perspective. The World Health Organization has also been warning that we potentially face what they call a moral crisis, given an inability to, to spread vaccines around the world effectively. Stefan, do you, do you think about that? I feel... Or I observe that there is unprecedented collaboration between governments, international institutions, industry, academia. We have important uh, initiatives such as COVAX, CEPI, uh, and so on. So never ever in human history has there been more collaboration on this. Yes, we do have issues. We must make sure that everybody gets equitable access 
to the uh, to uh, these vaccines, but I see more progress than ever before. So I I don't want to be a pessimist about this. Okay, let's not be pessimistic then in this year of all years. You mentioned the diversity of the business or the, the, the scope of the business. It operates in different areas, Stefan, one of those being semiconductors. We're seeing strong demand for chips. We're also seeing disruption and, and shortages in certain types of chips. How is this playing out for your business, either in terms of pricing power or uh, supply chains? What impact is that having on you? Yeah, so we have become through um, organic growth and various acquisitions, most late, uh, recently the acquisition of versatile materials, we become a leader in semiconductor materials worldwide. And this market is truly booming. Everybody, most people believe that the fact that we can communicate digitally as we do is mostly about software. It is very much about hardware. And therefore, semiconductor manufacturers are working at full capacity or even, uh, even beyond that. We have no capacity constraints in our manufacturing, but we're working at full, at full speed. And we are very confident that this is a long-term trend. 